Here's a memorable studio moment. I was working on a track that was produced by TK um, when I was about, I, was, I think it was like 19 turning 20. Um, and it's before I was signed, before anything I put out. I wrote this verse, it's called Working Girls. And I like, I couldn't like fucking make a song. And so I wrote, I wrote the verse and then I did like this sketch course and I sent it to him. I'm like, yeah, you know what? I, I don't think I can do it. Like it's just boo boo and it's not coming out right. And he sent it back to me and he's like, bitch, are you on crack? Like this shit is fire, like whatever the fuck. So we finished the song. The same thing happened with New York. I was I was in Brooklyn on a rooftop on Covert Street. And I was literally up there like, what the fuck am I gonna write this last song about? And when I put those, when I put out my record reservation, those are the two songs that blew me up. Like literally, the ones that I didn't want to do, the ones that I was like, nah, this shit is boo-boo, like whatever the fuck. Pitchfork gave both of them best track of the week consecutively. Like I was like, oh shit, I feel stupid for like, you know, doubting myself, but that shit was kind of lit when I think back on it. Here's a memorable studio moment. Um, we were working on my my latest project, Back to the Woods, um, me and TK. And one night we were just like fucking sitting there and I was sad and depressed or whatever. And he's like, how do you feel? And it, it's a song called Expose. Like we we literally freestyled the whole thing. I think that, sh that shit's dope because like when me and him get together, it's all based on emotion. So when you listen to my latest record, you feel everything, even in, in the drums and the fucking synths and how chunky it feels like a heartbeat is in the song, you know? And you can relate to me that way. Um, I think what's interesting is that when we sit down and we mesh, it just happens so naturally. I appreciate those moments more than anything because they let me know that I'm doing what I'm meant to be doing because it doesn't take any effort. It didn't take any paper. I don't have lyric sheets for any of the shit on my record because we did it that way. Where I walk up to the mic and I say, da, 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 da. And we wrote eulogy and I'm like, I want to do something that's high. And I'm like, my heart strings are broken. My song, my voice sounds like shit right now because I have a stuffy throat. But like, we did that in two seconds and it was the song, you feel me? And we never went back to it and, until we had to up produce it. And it was cool. Everything is just natural. I love that shit. They didn't want me to drop 100 million roses because Rocky was dropping Goldie the same week. And I said, what my shit got to do with Rocky stuff? I said, man, I need to drop something soon. I'm like, they seeing these freestyles on the radio. I'm like, Rocky said already, I'm ready to go. He was just playing all this shit that he'd never released. And this shit is just crazy. It's blowing my fucking mind. He's playing shit he did with Mary J. Blige, shit he did with other rappers, shit with Red Man. He didn't release shit with other rappers he once was signed with. And the shit was just like, Mind blowing. I'm like, what the fuck? This is crazy. I don't know. Can I say this on here? The joke of all these sessions were D's nuts. So, like, we would catch each other all the time with D's nuts. Like, yo, you wouldn't believe who just called me, bro. Like, and you'd be like, who? And I'd be like, D's nuts. This whole rap thing, I know it, I know it's for me because it's the only thing I've stuck with ever. Like, it's the biggest commitment I've ever made in my life where I did it and I have not stopped. Like, and I've never been like, this isn't for me. Like, it's always been for me, like everything else I tried growing up.